I get it. Going for your smear test might not be your idea of a fun day out. However, cervical cancer is one of the most preventable cancers, and getting your screening can help you stop it before it starts. People often avoid smear tests due to fear of the discomfort, embarrassment, having had past negative experiences, lack of information about how important they are. I'm Brooke, I'm an obstetrics and gynaecology doctor, and in this video I want to tell you about how we can make the experience of having your smear test, or cervical screening, a bit more comfortable so that you don't feel like you have to avoid it any longer. First up, why is cervical screening important? Smear tests are the best way to detect the early signs that could indicate you may develop cervical cancer. So you see, cervical cancer is one of the most preventable types of cancer. Catching any abnormal changes early drastically improves your chances of successful treatment. So by getting regular smear tests, you're literally giving yourself the best shot at staying healthy. Cervical screening or smear tests they're not a test for cancer. They're a screening test. That means that they aim to identify any changes that could lead to cancer before it gives you any symptoms of cancer, before it starts to invade anything. They don't replace having tests if you experience symptoms. So if you've got any abnormal discharge or any unusual bleeding or having pain with sex, you should still see a doctor even if you had a smear test a month before. Recently, the cervical screening program has shifted towards primary HPV testing, and that is actually because it's more effective. By detecting the HPV virus, we pick up more changes that could lead to cervical cancer. This advancement does also mean that in some cases you may not even need a speculum because you can self-sample with a swab, and that might mean that in the future you'll be able to take your own samples comfortably at home. So. What's going to happen during your cervical screening appointment? Well, if you're having a cervical screening appointment or a smear test with your doctor, you'll be called for an appointment every three to five years if you live in the UK. If you're coming from somewhere else, it may be yearly. It can be quite variable. As how often you have a smear test or you're recommended to have a smear test will depend on your age and also the frequency of smear testing in the area that you live in. If you've previously had an abnormal screening result, you might be recalled more frequently than that. For example, if you know that you've got a high risk HPV virus, you may be offered a yearly smear, or if you've had changes in your previous cervical smear result that didn't need any treatment, but they may be monitoring it, again, you may have more frequent smears than others. During the cervical screening appointment, the following steps usually occur. So first up, preparation. So you'll be asked to undress from the waist down and lie on an examination table. And a sheet or a gown will usually be provided for your privacy. And if you prefer, you can also keep a skirt on so you don't feel that you have to be completely exposed. Next, positioning. So you'll be asked to lie back and place your feet in stirrups or bend your knees and put your flat feet on the table. And that allows that healthcare provider easy access to your cervix. So next, the speculum is going to be inserted. So a speculum is a small instrument that's made of plastic or metal, and it's gently inserted into your vagina. This device holds the vaginal walls open so that the cervix can be seen. Then the sample is going to be collected. So using a small soft brush or spatula, that healthcare provider will take a sample of cells from the surface of your cervix. This part might feel a bit uncomfortable, but it usually isn't painful. The speculum's carefully removed and you're done. That cell sample is then sent to the lab for testing. You'll receive your results by mail or through your healthcare provider, they might contact you directly. And if there's any abnormalities found, you'll then be informed about what the next steps might be. Overall, the process of having a smear is quick. It usually only takes a few minutes and the healthcare provider will ensure that you're as comfortable as possible throughout. For the majority of women or people with a cervix, cervical screening tests aren't painful. However, there are some possible reasons that yours might be uncomfortable. There is a very strong connection between your mind and the pelvic floor. So relaxing your pelvic floor is an integral part of allowing a speculum to be inserted comfortably, but it's much easier said than done. Many women do experience vaginismus, and this can occur after a history of sexual trauma, if you've had previous infections in the pelvis, if you've got conditions like endometriosis, or if you suffer from anxiety, it causes you to tense up and can lead to difficulty with penetration. If you're worried that you might find the test uncomfortable, remember you're in control. You can ask them to stop at any time. So here's some top tips from me for having a comfortable smear test. And I know life can be hectic. It's easy to let your cervical screening appointment fall to the bottom of your to-do list. Don't ignore that cervical screening invitation. Book your appointment now. If you're worried, book an appointment just to chat it through with the doctor or nurse and they can help you to put you at ease. So first up, make sure you pee before entering the room. An empty bladder will make you feel much more comfortable and makes it easier to relax your pelvic floor. Next, as soon as you enter the appointment, mention to your doctor or nurse that you're feeling nervous. If you feel comfortable, do share any of the history that's relevant, such as if you have vaginismus or if you've had previous sexual trauma. It gives them an opportunity to tell you about what they can do to help to make your experience more comfortable. 
then ask for the smallest speculum possible to be used, or you can also ask to insert the speculum yourself. Sometimes it's much more relaxing to know that you're in control about how and when it's inserted, and the doctor and nurse can hold their hand close so that they can help guide your hand to help you to insert it. If you're worried about this part of the procedure, you can definitely ask to have a speculum to take home and practice with you at home. Another tip is you can ask the doctor or nurse to let you know before the speculum is going to be inserted and to talk you through what they're doing. You should breathe out as the speculum is inserted. And if you're not comfortable, then you can ask them to try a different position. So that might be by placing your fists under your buttocks to raise up your cervix, makes it easier for them to see. Or you might even get onto your side if you prefer. Finally, if you're finding the whole experience just quite overwhelming, you can use some headphones. You can listen to some music, listen to a meditation app, or just try some simple breathing techniques to help you to relax that pelvic floor. Now, I've done a video about smear tests before and I had some interesting comments, so I thought I'd share with you some responses. So the speculum size that I showed earlier is actually a medium sized speculum, but there are usually, depending on where you are, about four sizes of speculum, and they range from an extra small to a large. The large speculums are usually a bit longer and the smallest ones can be thinner and shorter. It makes them more comfortable to insert, but it can also mean that it's harder to see your cervix if it's really up at the top of the vagina. Either way, you should ask the healthcare professional to use the smallest size that they can. So it might mean starting with a very small speculum, but if they can't see, they might have to use a bigger one, but they can talk you through their plan. Now, ultimately, no, you don't ever need to have any tests. If a provider wants you to have a test, they should always explain why it's needed and how often it should be done. A wellness pelvic exam is certainly not necessary. You don't need to have your pelvis ex examined every time you see a doctor. So are you being called for a smear test soon? If you've got any questions or any other concerns that I haven't addressed, let me know and I'll make another video.